Hey friends, welcome back to Make Good Fashion, where we teach you how to start, launch, and grow fashion brands with purpose. Today's title is Help. A store has reached out to me. They want to carry my brand. What do I do? Okay, calm down. It's okay. I'm going to help you. First of all, congratulations that a store has even considered carrying your brand. That means that you are doing something right. And so that is a big deal. So give yourself a pat on the back before you freak out and lose your mind. Let's celebrate this moment. This is awesome. So first thing we need to ask ourselves, are we prepared for wholesale? Do we have the ability to fulfill orders? And so if you have a product already made, you have the ability to fulfill the orders. Great. Let's move on to the next step. If you don't, figure out how before you commit to anything. Okay. So if a store has contacted you and they want to sell your line, that means that they want to buy your product in bulk and resell it to their customers. Now, first of all, you want to make sure that you have a quality product. And this is so important because, yes, this is a great opportunity and we want to say yes to all the great opportunities. But we also want to make sure that we build long lasting partnerships with these retail stores. So you want to make a great first impression with the order that you are shipping to them. And so the first step is to make sure that you have a product produced that you are proud of, the quality is up to standard, and that if you were to see your brand in a store, that you would not cringe, but you would be so delighted to see that you are being carried in this retail store. Okay, so next thing is that we want to make sure that we have a line sheet. And a line sheet is basically a catalog that has all of our products on it and it has all the variants and product details on it. Now, we sell a line sheet template that looks like this on our website, makegoodfashion.com slash shop. It's super affordable and it has everything you need. It's basically a plug and play line sheet. So if you're interested in that, I will include the link in the description, but I'm going to share with you what exactly goes into a line sheet. So a line sheet, basically, again, it has all your products that are available for wholesale so that you can sell to these stores. It's going to have a picture of that product. It's also going to have the style number and the style number is basically the code that you should have that represents each piece. Each product should have its own unique style number. You also want to list the colors that that piece comes in, that they can order it in. You want to add the material. So what is the fabric content? If it comes in different prints, what kind of prints it comes in? You want to add the size range. What sizes are available in this product that uh, the store can purchase? And then you also want to add the shipping window. When do these items ship? So let's say that the store wants to place the order on things that you don't have made yet. So you want to put a realistic shipping window of the time frame that these items will ship and give yourself a buffer because you want to make sure, again, to make a good first impression with these stores. And technically, if you can't stand by your promise to ship these goods out in a certain time, that store can cancel. So just be realistic with when you can ship it out. Now, if you have product in stock um, that you're able to ship right away, you can just write immediates instead of a shipping window. So this means that these items are immediately ready to ship. Okay, so this is basically what goes into your line sheet. You also want to put the minimum order quantity, the MOQ. And what that means is this is the minimum amount of pieces that they need to order in order to order from you. So when we're dealing with wholesale, you're not going to just let them buy it piece by piece, right? You want them to buy in bulk. And so a standard uh, minimum order quantity be like four pieces per cell in color, but you can do whatever you want, however many pieces you want them to order. But a good rule of thumb is that you want a full representation of your brand on the retail floor. So you don't want them to just pick one small and one extra small, right? You want to be able to have the extra small, small, medium, large, and extra large, double XL, however long your size range is. You want to have a full representation on the retail store floor. And so, you know, whatever that may be. So if you have five sizes available, maybe your minimum will be five pieces per style and color. So just keep that in mind. One thing you also want to have on your line sheet is the wholesale costs and the retail costs. Now, here's the difference. So the retail cost represents how much you're selling the item for. And you want this to be in line with how much you sell it for on your online store or wherever you're selling direct to your customers. 
Okay, because what's going to happen is, let's say you are saying that the retail price is a higher amount for your wholesale customers. It's going to be off between the wholesale customers, wherever, let's say you're selling to like a Nordstrom's. If Nordstrom's is selling it higher and your website is selling it lower, of course, the customers are going to go buy it from you. And you don't want to com- uh, create this competitive nature between you and your wholesale partners, because then they're not going to want to order from you anymore because they feel like they're competing with your website. So you want to make sure that your retail price is aligned with however much you're selling it for on your retail store. Next, you also need the wholesale price, as I was saying, and the wholesale price is how much you will sell it to the store for. Now, a rule of thumb in the fashion industry is that wholesale price to retail price is 2.2. So if, you know, if your wholesale price is $10, you would times $10 by 2.2 to get your retail price, which you would retail it for $22 if the wholesale cost was $10. So you're selling it to the store for $10, and then the retail price is $22, which is how much your store and the retail store that you're working with will sell it for. And the way you get your wholesale price is that you want to mark up the cost of goods sold. So let's say it costs $2 to make your product. You're going to mark that up by, I like to get at least a 50% margin. So by two times two or whatever margin is right for you, where you're actually going to be making a profit and can actually cover overhead and everything you need to cover in your company, you will mark that up from the cost of goods sold, how much it costs to make the product. Okay, so then we have our wholesale and retail price. And so that's what goes into the line sheet. And so again, if you guys are interested in a line sheet template, make sure to head over to makegoodfashion.com slash shop and you guys can get the one that we've created. And again, it's super easy and it comes with instructions too. So it'll be really helpful. So aside from your line sheet, you also want some kind of order form or a platform to take orders on. Now, if you are new to wholesale, I recommend just using like an Excel sheet, but there's other platforms like New Order and other digital platforms that are a little bit more costly. When you expand your wholesale business, you can use things like this. But for now, a great Excel order form does the trick, something that looks something like this. Um, And this is something that we have custom made for one of our clients. And we've formulated everything on here. So basically, When the buyers put in how many pieces they want to buy of each style, then it'll automatically calculate for them and give them the total of how much that's going to be. Then you have your line sheet and your order form ready and you're good to go on that. But you also want to make sure that you're vetting the store who has reached out to you. You want to make sure that your brand is positioned in stores that represent your target customer that you feel great being represented in and that is a credible store. Sometimes people can reach out to you acting as a retail store to get your products at wholesale costs. And you don't want that. You want to make sure this is a reputable store that has a good history of paying on time and all of that. So what I like to do when a store reaches out before sending the line sheet and order form is sending them a business application. So basically, they will fill out their business name. Here's an example of one here. You fill out your business name, your information. You can ask for their website their store address, if they have a physical retail store, maybe they're just an e-commerce store. I like to put some lines in for what type of brands you sell currently so I can see if the brands that they carry are in line. And then also just maybe some references. If you would like some references, you can craft your application any way you want. Some people will have that application embedded into their website so that you can just send your potential customers a link and then they can fill their information out. And from there, we'll review it and then you can either approve it or say, you know what, we don't think this store is right for us, for our brand. So once you have approved the business application, then you want to send the line sheet and the order form so that they can go ahead and order. You can say, hey, so-and-so, thank you for sending that business application over. We really love your store. Here is a line sheet and an order form. Please let me know if you have any questions. I would love to highlight some of our best sellers that we think would work great in your store so you can give them those suggestions. Because ultimately, you guys, we want to make sure that these retailers are not just buying a bunch of things to buy so you can make a bunch of money. You want to make sure that they're actually choosing things that you feel confident that's going to work in their store, right? So feel free to make suggestions to them too. And once they place their order, they will send you back their order form. And then you can go ahead and ship out the goods. Now, I like to also give them a terms and conditions. And you can use 
tools like ChatGPT and ask ChatGPT, hey, ChatGPT, please formulate a terms and conditions for my fashion lines wholesale business, right? And make them sign the terms and conditions where you're going to outline things like, you know, this, this is the amount of days that you have to return if there's any defects and all the terms of your company. And we actually include this in our order form template. So if that's something that you want to get, again, the link is in the description. And so then you're covering yourself, right? Because you want to make sure you have that protection. And then also keep in mind that usually the retailers will cover shipping too. And then you can add in the shipping charge when you send them the invoice. So yeah, once you receive the order, you're going to create an invoice and build them for the items that they've gotten. And then you can figure out what kind of payment terms you want to work on with them. So de depending on how, if you have inventory or not, for example, if you have inventory that you can ship out right away, I always recommend 100% of payment pre-shipment. So once they pay, you ship. You don't ship anything before they pay so that you can make sure that you're covering yourself and not shipping product that hasn't been paid for. Now, if you have to produce the items and it's going to take a little while and you've given them a shipping window in the future, then you can choose if you want to do 100% pre-shipment, which means when all the goods are ready, then they pay. Or you can ask for a deposit, right? And the deposit can also help you to fund your manufacturing. So sometimes you will hear something like 3070 payment terms, right? So 3070 means that you require a 30% deposit to secure the order. And then the 70% they will pay before you ship the goods out. And I love these payment terms because, again, the 30% deposit is going to secure you some so you can make that product. Because sometimes what will happen is, you know, maybe a store purchased a ton of items and you didn't ask for a deposit, right? And by the time the goods are done manufacturing, you're ready to ship. Maybe that store goes out of business or they no longer want the goods. And then you spent all that money on manufacturing and didn't have anything to cover yourself with. So I always recommend doing a deposit if you can to to cover yourself. And just so you guys know, a lot of times bigger stores that have a bigger name will not pay a deposit because they know you need them more than they need you. So just keep that in mind. If you can't get the deposit, that's pretty normal for them. Hey friends, so season three of the podcast is all about wholesale. And I know many of you are anxious to take your fashion brands to the next level and get your amazing designs into retail stores. But let's face it, reaching out to retailers can be really challenging. And that's why I'm excited to share this incredible freebie that will make this process so much easier for you. And that's our wholesale pitch template, a comprehensive and easy to use guide designed to help you craft the perfect pitch to retailers. Whether you're just starting out or looking to expand your retail presence, this template has everything you need to make a professional and compelling pitch. So don't let the intimidation of reaching out to retailers hold you back. Head over to makegoodfashion.com slash pitch or hit the link in the description to download your copy for free. And so I hope that was helpful to you. Now, if you love this video, make sure that you like and subscribe and comment and share with me what your favorite takeaway was from this video. When I see you guys engaging, it helps me to know that this is actually helping people and I'm not doing this in vain. So I appreciate that so much, you guys. And I will see you next time on the next episode of Make Good Fashion.